Good morning. My name is Bruce Mallowood. I'm going to be doing a three-minute Thursday today, and I'm a reader in Natural Environmental Hazard here at King's College London, and today I'm going to talk to you about triggered landslide events. Now, first of all, what is a landslide? A landslide is basically any downslope movement of soil combined with the underlining upper rock layer, if we call it, we could call it the regolith, and this is due to the force of gravity. Now landslides are very important for erosional processes. They move material from high to low elevation. And then the streams and the glaciers can pick up this material. The landslide processes occur continuously on all slope. That means they go from very, very slow, that's called soil creep, to very quick, things like debris flows that can go at tens of kilometers per hour. As human populations expand, the landslide processes become uh, more likely to affect humans. Now, what triggers a landslide? We could have major shocks like earthquakes which shake the ground, and then we could have minor shocks such as human activity, troughs and explosions. We can have changes in hydrology, heavy rainfall, or sudden increase of temperature which might cause snow melt in the upper mountains to melt and cause a whole increase in the hydrology. Uh, volcanic eruptions, slope modifications such as road cuts and river undercutting. Now the landslides in a triggered event, these occur in the minutes to the weeks after the trigger itself. So after the earthquake you might have uh, to anywhere from individual to tens of thousands of landslides occurring in the minutes to hours just after the earthquake itself. Or after heavy amount of rainfall, in the couple weeks after the rainfall, you'll have anywhere from tens to tens of thousands of landslides occurring. The areas of these landslides range from very small meters squared to kilometers squared. Now I'm going to show you three examples of triggered landslide events. The first one from Italy, the second one from the USA, and the third one from Guatemala. So if we look at Italy, what we see here is a landslide inventory map. On the left-hand side is an outline of the province of Umbria from Italy. And we've blown this up on the right-hand side, and you can see individual landslides that have been mapped in this triggered landslide event. Now this event was caused due to snow melt, where there was a sudden increase in temperature in the mountains, and there was a bunch of snow that melted. This resulted in a large number of landslides because the ground became heavier, and also it became more lubricated. The sediment became easier to move. Here are some examples of some of the landslides from this triggered landslide event. So we have four examples ranging in sizes from smaller in the upper right hand corner where we can see a car for scale and then very large in the lower left hand corner where we can see a very large landslide that has occurred. Now in the second example from USA, from Northridge, this was a large earthquake that occurred in 1994 and there were 10,000, over 10,000 landslides that were triggered from this event itself. These are mostly shallow falls and slides of rock and debris. In the third example, we have almost 10,000 landslides that resulted from a lot of rain that was in the sidewalls of Hurricane Mitch. And this was in Guatemala. And this resulted in a large amount of damage, devastation to the area around Guatemala. Now, why do we study triggered landslide events? What we can learn about future risk of other events occurring, we can learn more about erosion of the landscape around us. It's also very useful to civil protection agencies so that they can better understand the numbers of landslides that are intersecting with road networks. So if you'd like to know more about this, you can go to the geography homepage and then click on People, Malamud, and Publications. Thank you very much.